Um, now you see again, everyone. I've said this before, but when you, even if you've got a leopard sighting like this, and it looks like you're not going to get a good view, just be patient and wait because they will at some point leave and move around. Now look at that for a second. Now there've been three other vehicles that have moved through this area, but no one got to see him out within this beautiful light because they just weren't patient enough. Now, and I must be honest, I, I know um, guests come out on safari a lot and, and go to different areas. Don't, don't be shy to ask your guide to, to sit and be patient and spend time in a sighting. It is, after all, your safari, and it will pay off. I really do think so. I mean, yeah, the guides do generally know or understand behavior, but... Oh, there he goes. Wait, up the termite mount. Yes. <laughs> I thought so. He's gone right up the termite mount. Look at him take that little, little, little leap over there. Oh, look at this. <laughs> This is the joy of following a young leopard. Playful, curious. Oh, isn't that amazing? That is a magnificent view of him. Right up on the termite mound. Jason, you say, is so majestic. He is, isn't he? Even for a young leopard. Very majestic. Quick movement. But now, remember everyone, this morning Sebastian and I were saying we're scanning the tops of termite mounds because we know leopards do tend to enjoy termite mounds. It gives them a vantage point and it's a bit more comfortable than a tree from time to time. Seb, give me a second. Let me try and move and get a slightly better view for you. And I'm thinking of the light, everyone. So the light is coming from this side. And I think just from through, from here we might get a better view. He's put his head down a little bit, but I think we'll still get a nice view from here and better light and see his face. Hold up. Can you see them? Oh, hang on, hang on. There's some impala through the thicket straight ahead of us. And I think that's possibly what he's seen. Not possibly, he's definitely seen them. Yeah. Sebastian's got some more impala through there. Now, I don't know if young Tumba has managed to make a kill for himself yet. If it's a case of him being curious more than anything else. I think Seb, you know what, let me try position over there quickly and then um, we won't be in his way either. All right, now Alice was saying you watched the young Tumba catch a guinea fowl on World Bird Day. So now a guinea fowl, yeah, a guinea fowl, and I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe a mongoose or something like that. There we go. Now I'm not in his way, so he can have a look at those impala. And we've got a lovely view of him now. That is beautiful. <laughs> Rochelle, you say, cue the circle of life song. <laughs> That's beautiful. So as I was saying, yeah, I know he's, he's probably killed a guinea fowl or two and some, maybe a Franklin or maybe a mongoose or a squirrel. As a young leopard, they'll do that, and that's what they'll learn. 
learn from but but I think um, something the size of an Impala maybe he's still a bit inexperienced but but he will still be curious and you never know you never know I mean how old is Tamba now I'm trying to think um, is Tamba a year old okay so uh, apparently he's 14 months yeah so he's over a year yeah Mrs. Zero you say about 14 months so just over a year old okay well um, we know the other young leopards in this area young Hosanna and Shungile they were basically left on their own at this age fortunately for Tamba I'm sure his mother will still come and take him to a kill but um, but 14 months he, he'll definitely have a look at, at an impala and possibly try his luck I think his, his mother will be very impressed if she returns into this area and he um, and he has a, a kill of his own. But you see he's got a wonderful little spot up there now. He can basically hide behind that grass and he can keep an eye on the impala and see if they move any closer. Oh, they're just moving through the thicket but not in this direction we can't really see them they're moving i wouldn't say away from us they're just feeding slowly in that area that we saw them they weren't too far but Alan girl, you asked, am I not scared at all? Um, no, not, not at all. <laughs> look at that pose that he's got there at the moment. That's lovely. So Alan girl, look, I'm very respectful of these animals. Um, I always, always be respectful of the, the animals, the predators, the herbivores, everything. But, but I'm not scared in that. It, it, I'm not interfering with this leopard. I'm not trying to get too close that he feels uncomfortable I can see he, I mean he hasn't even looked at us really so there's no reason for him to react aggressively towards us now this young leopard even though he's young could cause some serious damage if he did decide to jump in this vehicle and he could seriously hurt us but again um, they are we need to remember they are more afraid of us than we are of them. Oh, I think he's going to walk down here. Let's see. Wow, look at that. Look at that. He is he's stalking. Now, I'm going to give him a bit of space. I'm not going to drive right behind him. Look at that, he's definitely stalking his impala. That's amazing. Look at the head low, the tail low, moving quite quickly. Trying to sneak around. I'd like to see if we can just keep an eye on him. Now the wind is in his favor right now. Is it B, B Scotty? B, sorry, I didn't hear. Hold on a second. Seb. Yeah. B Smithy, you say, is the wind in his favor? Definitely, definitely the wind is in his favor. Because it is windy, it will be difficult for the Impala to pick up on his scent and the sound. Sorry. You know what, he's probably going to disappear from us. Oh, there he is, well spotted. Well spotted, Seb. Like I say, if we can just keep an eye on him from here, 
I don't want to drive too close to him, everyone, because I don't want to disturb him while he is potentially hunting. Again, we need to be sensitive, I, and he is learning. So there's no need for us to try and drive too close and uh, make too much noise. Fortunately, the road isn't far from us, so we might actually be able to get a, a view from the road. Can you still see him through there, Seb? He was there, he's just moved, yeah. But yeah, these windy conditions are ideal because the prey in part of there is. He's still just through there. Sorry, Seb. There it is. Wouldn't this be incredible if we saw this young male hunt and kill an impala for the first time. Oh, well, I don't know if it's the first time, but I haven't heard of him being on an impala kill by himself. Now, I'm trying to scan just to see where these impala are. Oh, you know what? Some of them are walking, some of them are walking towards him. This is going to be quite exciting. He's, he's not that far from them. You know what, I think, let's just be patient. Let's just sit here for a while. I'm not going to move. I don't want to disturb what is going on here. Even though we can't, uh, even though we can't um, really see him. I've got a glimpse of him again. Well done, Seb. Seb still got him. And he's watching those Impala. So even the, though the view isn't great for the moment, it's definitely worthwhile just sitting patiently and watching. <laughs> Julian, you say, Tom has got 12 minutes <laughs> left. Now, this is exciting. Those impala are walking. It looks like they must be about 20 or 30 meters in front of him. Now, all he needs is possibly a younger impala, one that's a little less experienced. But all of this, even, even if he isn't lucky, even if he's not successful, with the hunt here. This is a great learning curve for this young leopard. Teaching him how to stalk, how to get close. Oh, looks like all the impala have moved past already. Seb, I think I'm going to change our position quickly. Um, it looks like those impala have moved past already. They moved in that direction, so away from the leopard, but they didn't see him because there wasn't alarm call. There was no alarm call. They, they didn't look in that direction, so I don't think they knew there was anything there, but they are obviously a bit cautious and nervous because of the wind. But again, you see how important it is, everyone, and it is, everyone, that even if we do see them stalking, I know a lot of people always ask, but are we sensitive with, with animals when we see them hunting? Just like that situation, we stayed far back, gave him his space, didn't interfere or interrupt him at all. And we need to bear that in mind all the time. I think guides in general need to always bear in mind. Can you see him? Just let me know. Just let me know if you get a view. Uh, Move it forward for you. Oh, there he is. Uh, there he is. Well, he's come through already. There we go. Let's get him through there, Seb. Oh, he's, these Impala are so close to him. <laughs> but they're moving through. All he needs to do is sneak up behind one of them. Now a lot of you could hear the arrow mark babblers 
and there was a um, it sounded like a grey-headed bushrike giving an alarm call. I, d I don't know the, those arrow mark babblers. I don't think they were actually alarm calling at him um, because they weren't that close to him. They were close to us, but I don't think they were alarm calling at the leopard. To be honest. That was exciting. Yeah, let me go forward a bit. Ah, oh, there he is. He's just walking away now. Well, luckily for us, we got to see. Oh, there's a warthog. Hang on, there's a warthog. Can you get it? There, Seb. There's a warthog in front of this leopard. Um, That's the warthog. Uh, the warthog is over there, through there. Sorry, Sam, it's a bit thick here. Oh, I don't know if this leopard. I don't know if the leopard saw the warthog or if the warthog saw the leopard. I can't see where Tumba is now. He just moved through the long grass there. And that warthog would most likely do some damage to Tumba, to the young male, if he did decide. I think that warthog's a bit too big for him. I think he's too inexperienced. This could be this could be quite entertaining. Maybe the warthog chases the leopard. Let's see, it's almost like that warthog has seen the leopard already. I don't know. No, maybe not. Wow, this is this is really interesting behavior. I don't know where the leopard is. I think he's lying down in the long grass here somewhere. Henny, you are voting for Tumbo. You say, make us proud. It's just such a little longer. The warthog, I mean, even for an adult uh, leopard, a warthog is a tough kill. So to to expect a young male like this to, to kill a big warthog, I think is very, very unlikely. Um, Seb, can I just show you something quickly? It's just a beautiful bird. If you look um, straight up there, there we go, just to the right. Look at that, everyone. If you can get a screenshot of that. I'm actually not sure. It looks like a goshawk, but possibly a juvenile. You've seen a lot of banding. I wonder if it's not an African African goshawk. I will double check when I get back. But I just thought let's try get it on on screen for you to have a look. Um, but it does look like a juvenile. The plumage and that. And we'll double check that. Let's just see if we can get another glimpse of young Tumba. See where he's gone. A nice little bird of prey. See, there's always things. There's always things happening around you. Can you see him? I wonder if I go around here, maybe. In his direction, then definitely would have 
tried, I th I'm sure of it. That war dog, I think he took one look at that big boar and thought, not uh, not something he'd like to tackle just yet. <laughs> Those war dogs are very powerful, very strong. James, uh, you were saying you'd avoid an adult warthog if you were this young male leopard. And James, I agree with you completely. I'd avoid a warthog now. <laughs> Especially one that size had some serious tusks on it. Well, what a wonderful sighting. Our patience paid off. And again, you see, we're the only ones here. He's still watching the warthog, but you can see he's not <laughs> he's not interested in stalking. And the other thing is the warthog's seen the leopard, and the warthog's not running away. There, there is that warthog. Look at those tusks. That's a big, big warthog. <laughs> that warthog doesn't seem too phased either. <laughs> Charles, you say it's interesting how they keep their the, their heads in the wind like that. I'm assuming you mean the leopard. Now I think, yeah, you know, um, I think what's happening is he's putting his his head into the wind so he can potentially smell, see if he picks up the scent of anything. It was wonderful to see this behavior from a young leopard. Quite different to that of an adult. But he's learning, he's exploring. So this was very special. This was great. Really paid off for us this morning, hey Seb? And we've had beautiful views of him now and him running up onto that termite mound. As I was saying, it's a nice vantage point for them. It's comfortable, nice to see. <laughs> Josh, you were saying a perfect ending. <laughs> Very clever, Josh, with the big cat. I'm sure some of you have heard this before, but the only big cat that does purr is a cheetah. The lions and leopards do not purr. They roar or growl. Watch, he's still he's interested in that warthog. But the warthog is almost like it's taunting him. Anyway, I think we'll leave him. That warthog's running off now anyway. He's probably going to move further through the thicket. What a wonderful, what a wonderful morning. And thanks again.